Good morning. It's 8.27 a.m. my time here. Go ahead and get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. And turn into your authorized version of the scriptures to Genesis chapter 24. Genesis chapter 24. This video is a video done in collaboration with a beloved brother. We are going to be looking at worship. Worship. But you are going to see once we get going in this video that uh, we're going to be branching off into different aspects. Uh, you'll you'll see when once we get going, but um, like I said, this is a collaborated effort. A beloved, beloved brother gave me a majority of the notes for this, and um, and he and I, and of course our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, uh, has added on to this as he saw fit. But like I said. We're going to be looking at worship a little bit today. Now, the word worship actually appears in the authorized version of the scriptures 188 times uh, in its various derivatives thereof, okay? <clears throat> and the first time that the word worship appears in the scriptures is in Genesis chapter 22, and you can read the context on your own time when it appears, verses 1 under verse 8, okay? Let's go now. We are in Genesis chapter 24. We're going to skip around within Genesis chapter 24, but you're going to note something, okay? Genesis chapter 24, we are going to be reading verses 12 on to verse 14 to start. Now, this is when Abraham was old and stricken in age, okay? And he was sending out his servant to get a wife for Isaac. Okay, amongst his own kindred, all right, to Laban and whatnot. And this is where we pick up uh, uh, when Abraham sends out his servant, okay? Let's actually read verses 10 on to verse 14, okay? Genesis chapter 24, verses 10 on to verse 14. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master, and departed. For all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. Okay? And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham. Note that. Note that. Right here, thus far, he does not claim personal. He doesn't say, O Lord my God. No, he says, and he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham. Note that. I pray thee, send me good speed this day and shoot kindness unto my master Abraham. Okay? Also, this shows and denotes a bit of selflessness. Okay? Selflessness. Not selfishness. Selflessness. How? And shoot kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city shall come out to draw water. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou hast shewed kindness on to my master. Note the no right there. And thereby shall 
I know that thou hast shewed kindness unto my master. Okay? Was this man tempting God? No. Not really. Not really. No. Uh, we learn in verse 12, and he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee that he was not making a personal connection with the Lord my God. O Lord God of my master Abraham. Okay? And then when you get down to verse 14, and thereby shall I know that thou hast shewed kindness unto my master. This is a different dispensation. Okay? This is before the law. Okay? All right? Obedience during this time, during this dispensation, was a prime out. Okay? The, are you with me so far? This dispensation before the law, after the Garden of Eden, is similar unto this dispensation. Similar. They were not sealed until the day of redemption. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, did not indwell as he does today in this dispensation. There are differences. There are major differences, but yet it is similar. Okay? I have to point that out. Now, go to verses 26 on to verse 27. The Lord plays this thing out. And what happens is that a woman, uh, Rebecca, came out and she did all these things. He, uh, about, uh, what, what does he say? Um, and it came to pass, uh, okay. But he says uh, he that, um, let this be the woman whom thou hast chosen. If she does, like, you know, says, uh, give my camels drink as well. And she goes and runs off and does it, okay? Okay? With that, verses 26 on to verse 27. You can, I kind of botched that a little bit. Sorry for that. But you can read that context on your own time. Verse 26 and 27. And the man bowed down his head, the servant, and worshipped the Lord. Mm. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham. Note that again. Who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's Brethren, look at verse 26. And the man bowed his head and worshipped the Lord. Worship. See, bowing his head? Worship. <clears throat> now go to verse 48. Go to verse 48. We're going to see another uh, parallel to verse 26. And I bowed down my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. Okay, look at verse 27. Look at verse 27. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master, of my master's brethren. Here, verse 48. And I bowed down my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son so you see he acknowledges the Lord led him 
And in verse 48, he blesses him. And also, blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham in verse 27. Hmm. You see that? You see that? Okay. And also with the uh, worship here, what two things are in common thus far? Bowing the head. Verse 52. <clears throat> Verse 52, And it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshipped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. Bowing. Okay, you, you get the point. Okay? So, what do we see thus far with these verses that we have looked at? We see bow, don't we? Don't we? Look, okay, okay. Look at verse 26. And the man bowed down his head, okay? Verse 48. And I bowed down my head. And verse 52. Bowing himself to the earth. Bow. You see that, right? Okay, go to Exodus chapter 4 now, Exodus chapter 4, Exodus chapter 4, verses 27 under verse 31, Exodus chapter 4, verses 27 on to verse 31, okay? You can read the context on your own time. We, we, we got quite a bit we're going to go through here today. Okay, Read the context on your own time. Exodus 4, verses 27 on to verse 31. And the Lord said to Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. And he went, and met him in the mount of God, and kissed him. And Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord who had sent him and all the signs which he had commanded him. And Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Israel. And Aaron spake all the words which the Lord had spoken unto Moses, and did the signs in the sight of the people. And the people believed. And when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel, and that he looked upon their afflictions, uh, upon their affliction, excuse me, then they bowed their heads and worshipped. Yeah, again, you see, bowing is associated with worship. Okay? And signs, uh, look at verse 30, and did the signs in the sight of the people. The Jews require a sign, see. And look at verse 31, the latter half of it. Then they bowed their heads and worshipped. Mm, bowing. Okay. Now go to Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. We will be reading verses 21 on to verse 28. Exodus chapter 12, verses 21 on to verse 28. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families, and kill the Passover. Uh, but obviously this is talking about the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop, and dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintels, and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. There are so many tie-ins with John chapter 10 that you can make. And also I have an older video which is uh, in the playlist onto the Jewish people where um, we talk about how Christ is our Passover going over the Passover here in Scripture. Okay, so I'm not going to get too deep into that, okay? But you can go ahead and find that. I, might, I may link it in this video. But anyway, let's continue. And the Lord will pass through, the, through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, 
the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in onto your houses to smite you. And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. And it shall come to pass when ye be come to the land, when ye be come to the land which the Lord will give you, according as he hath promised, that ye shall keep this service. Okay, Passover ordinances for the Jewish people, just so you know. Okay, and the blood on this, the doorposts and on the upper lintel, all about Christ Jesus, God our Father. Okay, but like I said, I'm not going to get into that. Let's continue. And verse 25, and it shall come to pass when ye be come to the land which the Lord will give you, according as he hath promised, that ye shall keep this service. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service? That ye shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses, and the people bowed the head and worshipped. And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. Worship, bowing, worship. Note here, so far of what we looked at about worship, you know that there isn't any tie-in with music, okay? Praise, that kind of stuff. Have you noticed that thus far? Hmm? I'm not saying, I'm just saying, see. Now, Exodus chapter 32. Exodus chapter 32. Exodus chapter 32, verses 1, on to verse 10. <clears throat> you got to like this. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron, and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not... What is become of him? Now, at the verses of scripture that we have seen thus far, looking at worship, about bowing, right? It has all been focused on the Lord so far, right? Right, and what he has done and is doing, right? Okay? And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives and your sons and your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. After he had made it a molten calf. Later on, if you were to continue reading, you would see that Aaron's like, well, I just put it all together and out came this calf. So, like, uh, Aaron, do you think you could have come up with a little better lie than that? You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, anyway, anyway. And they said, these be thy gods, O Israel, that brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Now, pay attention. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. False God. Okay, little g. And notice in verse 4, these be thy gods, plural. But he made one molten calf. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Okay, let's continue. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early on the morning and offered burnt offerings and brought peace 
offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play in front of the calf, which Aaron said, These be thy gods. And he built an altar before it. Mm. Mm. Let's continue. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down, for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them, and have made them a molten calf, and have worshipped it. Thus far, remember, we have looked at uh, worshipping. What one thing have we saw thus far that is that is uh, attributed to worship? Bowing. Right? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Let's reread this. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them, they have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereon too and said, These be thy gods, plural, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them and that I may consume them and I will make thee, make of thee, excuse me, a great nation. Hmm. Now let's play Captain Obvious. Do you think the Lord was a little angry? Perhaps you could say even furious that the people that he brought out of Egypt, because, look at verse 1, and when the people saw that Moses delayed, patience is a virtue, remember. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, patience is a virtue, right? You know that? Yeah, hi, yeah. <laughs> And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, itching ears, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. Yeah, our Lord was a little angry, just a little bit, about these people. Worshipping, bowing unto a golden calf, which they called their gods, but they made one calf. You see what I'm saying? Now go to Exodus chapter 34. That's going to play in the part a little bit later, okay? Exodus chapter 34, we're going to be reading verses 5 on to verse 17 now. Exodus chapter 34, verses 5 on to verse 17. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. This is uh, he, Moses, okay? And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, the Lord, and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Get, okay, get the gravity of what's going on here. Okay. The Lord is proclaiming unto Moses. Okay. Get that gravity. Let's continue. Keeping mercy for thousands forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth. 
and worshipped. And he said, note that, note that, okay, look at verse 8, and Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. Worship, excuse me. And he said, Moses, <clears throat> oh boy, if now I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us, for it is a stiff necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for thine inheritance. Okay. Worship. Look at verse 8. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshiped. And he said, Moses. So, okay. He's bowing his head and worship to the Lord and speaking. And, and while he was speaking, Moses, while he was speaking, okay, oh yeah, you feel me now? <laughs> you feeling me now, right? And he said, if now I have found grace in thy sight, unmerited favor, the greater blessing the lesser. Oh yeah, now you're feeling me. <laughs> oh Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, mm, go among us, for it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity, including himself, and our sin, and take us for thine inheritance. Let's continue. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant before all thy people will do before all thy people I will do marvels, such as have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation. And all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord, for it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. Observe thou that which I command thee this day. Behold, I drive out before thee the Amorite, and the Canaanite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Gotta mention this. When you look at verse 9 again, you know what that you, you know you know what that's called? Verse 9. He's bowing his head in worship and speaking unto the Lord. Okay? That's humility. That's humility. True humility is something that is foreign unto those who just say, simply believe. Oh, oh, we're going to get more on that here a little bit later. Let's continue, though, from verse 12. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee, for our instruction in righteousness, uh, hold your place here for our instruction in righteousness right there go to Romans chapter 12 go to Romans chapter 12 you ought to know what verses we are going to be looking at if you do not know hold on wait for the old man to get there Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. 
And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Go back to Exodus, verse 12. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest, lest it be a snare in the midst of thee. But ye shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. Remember what we looked at in um, Exodus chapter 32? For thou shalt worship no other god, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. He made you. So, see, some people out there really struggle with God being jealous. How can a perfect God be jealous? He's our Father. He made you. Yes, even you. You atheist, evolutionary individuals. Millions and billions of years, nothing exploded. And another millions and billions of years, suddenly there was water, and a piece of sniveling snot came out of that water. <laughs> no, we were created by our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. And after he has made you, yes, you, you're going to worship your who? What other God? Let's get, let's, let's get right down to it. And I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I'm going to let this cat out of the bag. What other God are you worshiping? Little G God, Satan. But are you not also as Satan exalting yourself? I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Let's continue. Lest thou make a covenant with... Uh, uh, verse 15. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a whoring after their little g-gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods. And one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice. And thou take of their daughters unto thy sons, and their daughters go a whoring after their gods, and make and make thy sons go a whoring after their gods. Thou shalt make thee no molten gods. Now, go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Deutero, second. Second giving of the law to the generation that the kids of the people who were brought out because they refused to trust on the Lord. When he said, there's the promised land, I'm going to be with you, go get it. They, they didn't trust on the Lord. Trust on him. Okay? And because of that, our Lord was just a little angry and he killed all that generation, except for two people. Um, you, you tell me that there's your homework. Okay? So, hence the second law, Deuteronomy. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Oh, and by the way, we do not see the word worship in Leviticus. <laughs> um, okay, sorry. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 15 on verse 20. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire, lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image 
the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. And you're going uh, to tie this in, you can read Romans chapter 1. Okay? <clears throat> the likeness of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air. Again, cross reference this with Romans chapter 1 sometimes. And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun, the moon, and the stars, even all the host of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them, and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. But the Lord hath taken you, and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance as ye are this day. Look at verse 19 again. Shouldest be driven to worship them. And a note in verse 14. The similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female? Uh, verse 17, the likeness of any beast that is on the earth? The likeness of any <laughs> winged fowl that flieth in the air? I, I, you know, the trinity, the satanic trinity with the little bird. <laughs> okay, you, you with me? Worship. And thus far we have seen what is associated with worship. Bowing. And we saw Moses while he was worshiping, speaking. Oh boy. Instruction of righteousness here, verse 20. But the Lord hath taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance as ye are this day. Separation. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, and I will be your God, saith the Lord. Slightly paraphrased there. Pick your pardon. Separation. Are you bowing down, worshiping, speaking unto other gods? Hmm. Let's continue. Let's continue. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 10 and under verse 20. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 10, under verse 20. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day. This is during the dispensation of the law. We have to remember that. Let's continue though. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full, and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thine heart, ooh, that's going to play in a little later, then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions, and drought, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of Flint, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee, and do thee good at thy latter end. See, see all that our Lord did for the children of Israel, right? Okay? 
Now, in now, put this in your head. God died for our sins according to the scriptures. Died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He shed his blood on that cross for you. The payment for your sin against him. He shed his blood, which is the payment for our sins. The blood of God. And he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. For you. For me. Have you forgotten? Are you, can you, those of you who are of the church of the living God, truly saved and born again, you get this. You, you get why and how our Lord God, our Father, Jesus Christ, can be jealous over that which he created. After all, he has given you, given us. Let's continue. And thou say in thine heart, my power. And the might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. My power and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. I'm saved by my belief only. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. And, and, and th th those uh, prosperity twits. Okay, those guys, they come to this and they, they, they teach people that God is a genie in a bottle. If you rub him the right way, he's going to give you a... a uh, uh, I had, just had to mention that. It's heresy. Let's continue. That he may establish his covenant which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. And it shall be, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them. Bowing down. We also seen that speaking is also kind of a part of worship. Speaking. I testify against you this day that ye shall surely perish as the nations which the Lord destroyeth before your face. So shall ye perish because ye would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. Thus far what we've looked at, you have seen that the Lord has done quite a few things for the children of Israel. And today for us of the church of the living God, our Lord, our God, our Father, our Comforter, Jesus Christ, has done everything for us. Everything for us. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 16 on to verse 21. Again. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived, and ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you, and he shut up the heaven that there be no rain, and, the, and that the land yield not her fruit. Unless ye perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord giveth you. Oh, beg your pardon. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. Bind them upon, bind them for a sign upon your hand, hmm. that they may be as frontlets before your eyes. Hmm. Or between your eyes, excuse me. Mm, interesting, huh? And ye shall teach them your children. Note it doesn't say teachers. Professors. 
And ye shall teach them your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thine house, and upon thy gates, that your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them, as the days of heaven upon the earth. Hmm. I really like verse 18, you know. Bind it upon your hand as a front lets between your eyes. Hmm? Hmm. And Deuteronomy chapter 17. Verses 1 under verse 5. Thou shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord thy God any bullock or sheep, wherein is blemish, or any evil favoredness, for that is an abomination unto the Lord thy God. I thought sodomy was the only abomination in the sight of God. Hmm. Hmm. You know, like uh, venial and mortal sins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If there be found among you within any of thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, man or woman, that hath wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord thy God, in transgressing his covenant, and hath gone and served other gods, and worshipped them, either the sun or moon, or any of the host of heaven, which I have not commanded. Remember what we read in... Um, Romans chapter 12, 1 through 2. Let's continue. And it be told thee, and thou hast heard of it, and inquired diligently, and behold, it be true, and the thing certain, that such abomination is wrought in Israel. Then shalt thou bring forth that man or that woman which have committed that wicked thing unto thy gates, even that man or that woman, and thou shalt stone them with stones. Till they die. For us today, the instruction in righteousness is when the Lord uh, makes manifest unto you someone who is not of us, yet trying to be of us, and the Lord shows you beyond shadow of a doubt. You cut them off, and they can go do whatever they want to do. Separation. It's not, no, we're not to go literally take up a stone and throw it at them. Because, see, there are some out there who worship, bow down, even speak unto another Jesus. You know, one that is not in accordance with his authorized version of the scriptures. You know, a Jesus that has no requirement, who um, doesn't want, you know, who doesn't count brokenness a necessity, turning from yourself, sorrow. No, no, no. No. Hmm. Yeah. Go to Second Chronicles now. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter seven, verses one on to verse seven. Oh, King Solomon here. Second Chronicles seven, verses one on to verse seven. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying. The fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priests could not enter into the house of the Lord, because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped, and praised the Lord, praised the Lord, saying, 
for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Mm. Get a lot of that verse, huh? Okay? Bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord. There you go. Worship and praised. There you go. Saying. Note that little saying. Saying. For he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Hmm. Let's continue. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. And King Solomon offered a sacrifice of twenty and two thousand oxen and a hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. Look what they gave. Self. Selflessness. And the priests waited on their offices. The Levites also with instruments of music of the Lord, which David the king had made to praise the Lord. Okay? Right there. The Levites also with instruments of music of the Lord, which David the king had made to praise the Lord. Praise. Praise the Lord. You praise the Lord with, you can praise the Lord with music. Absolutely. But look at verse 3 again. Okay. They bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped, comma, and praised the Lord, saying, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Okay? And right here at verse 6, And the priests waited on their offices, the Levites also with instruments of music of the Lord, which David the king had made to praise the Lord. Okay? Because his mercy endureth forever. When David praised by their ministry, and the priests sounded trumpets before them, and all Israel stood. So, see what has happened. Uh, well, let's read verse 7. Moreover, Solomon hallowed the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord. For there he offered burnt offerings and the fat of the peace offerings, because the brazen altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offerings and the meat offerings and the fat. Okay? What has happened is... The church building system, which is modeled after Catholicism, um, has blended worship and praise as one thing. And they, of course, brought in rock music and whatnot, and they think because they turn on an amplifier and guitar, they think that's worship. Can you praise the Lord in your worshiping? Uh, oh, hello, did you read verse 3? Yes. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. But it's a saying. Okay? But music is attributed more so, of course, onto praise. Okay? Worship itself. Worship is a little bit more personal thing which is bowing down and speaking. Let's continue. Go to Nehemiah chapter 8. Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 8. Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 8. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra, the scribe, to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding, upon the first day of the seventh month. And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate, from the morning until midday, 
before the men and the women, and those that could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. Okay? And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood, which they had made for the purpose. And beside him stood Mattathiah, and Shema, and Aniah, and Urijah, and Hilkiah, and Maziah, on his right hand, and on his left hand, Pedaiah, and Mishael, and Malkiah, and Hashum, and Hashbadana, Zechariah, and Meshulam. Verse 5. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people on that pulpit thing. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen. With lifting up their hands, they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. And Yeshua, or Yeshua, excuse me, and Benai, and Sherbiah, Jamin, Akub, Shabbatai, Hadoja, Hadoja, Meziah, Kalita, Azraiah, Josabad, Hanan, Palaiah, and the Levites caused the people to understand the law, and the people stood in their place. So they read in the book of in the law of God distinctly, and gave the sense, and caused them to understand the reading. So, what did we see here? Look at verse 6. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, with lifting up their hands, and bow, and they bowed their heads, and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Go to Job. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. Now, very quickly, you have to keep in mind here about Job. Our Lord called Job a upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. God's own testimony of Job. And of course, you all know that God allowed Satan to tempt Job, to break him. Okay? And in verse 15, verse 16, verse 17, and verse 19, okay? Job was devastated. One, two, three, four, in succession. Satan was allowed to take all things away from him. And later on, if you were to continue in chapter 2, you see how Satan was allowed of the Lord to touch his bone and his flesh. Okay? After all that Job went through, Job 1, verses 20 on to verse 22. Then Job arose... Rent his mantle, and shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground, and worshipped, and said, don't, 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 don't miss that, don't miss that, and said, naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. So worship, bowing, fell down upon the ground, and worshiped. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, 
The Lord hath taken away, blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. So we know that bowing is attributed unto worship. And said, speaking, lifting up your hands, being on the ground even. Hmm. 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 Let us continue. Go to Psalm 66. Psalm 66. Psalm 66. Make a, joy, make a joyful noise unto God, all ye lands. Sing forth the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Notice it does not say worship. Make his praise glorious. Let's continue. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies submit themselves unto thee. All the earth shall worship thee, and shall sing unto thee. They shall sing to thy name, Selah. Okay? Now see, we see worship thee, okay? Comma, and shall sing unto thee. They shall sing to thy name. And when you look at verses 1 and 2, sing forth the honor of his name, make his praise glorious. Okay? You see that? Let's continue. Come and see the works of God. He is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. He turned the sea into dry land. They went through the flood on foot. There did we rejoice in him. He ruleth by his power forever. His eyes behold the nations. Let not the re rebellious exalt themselves, Selah. O oh, bless our God, ye people, and make the voice of his praise to be heard, which holdeth our soul in life, and suffereth not our feet to be moved. Notice in verse 8. O oh, bless our God, ye people, and make the voice of his praise to be heard. Okay? Verse 10. For thou, O God, hast proved us. Thou hast tried us as silver is tried. Thou broughtest us into the net. Thou laidest affliction upon our loins. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. But thou broughtest us out into a wealthy place. I will go into thy house with burnt offerings. I will pay thee my vows, which my lips have uttered, and my mouth hath spoken when I was in trouble. I will offer unto thee burnt sacrifice. Uh, burnt sacrifices of fatlings with the incense of rams. I will offer bullocks with goats. Selah. Come and hear, all ye that fear God, and I will declare what he hath done for my soul. All ye that fear God? Oh. Fear God? Mm. And I will declare what he hath done for my soul? Hmm. I cried unto him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. Cried unto him with my mouth. Hmm. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But verily God hath heard me. Uh, he hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Uh, look at verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me? What about them pet sins of yours that you're clinging on to, right? That you love just a little bit more than the truth of God's word than maybe competes with the Lord who is jealous? <laughs> Let's continue. But verily God hath heard me. He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Hmm. Psalm 95. Psalm 95. 
Psalm 95. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with, with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it. And his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work. Harden not your hearts. That's going to come into play later. Looking at how long we got. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their heart. And they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Look at verse 6. Oh, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Bowing down, kneeling, speaking. Hmm. 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 You don't say, huh? Now, Go to Isaiah. Go to Isaiah. Chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 2. One second, brother. Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 2, verses 5 on to verse 22. O house of Jacob, come ye, and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Therefore thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they, because they be replenished from the east, and are soothsayers like the Philistines, and they please themselves in the children of strangers. Their land also is full of silver and gold, neither is there any end of their treasures. Their land is also full of horses, neither is there any end of their chariots. Their land also is full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, that which their own fingers have made. Bowing down, kneeling, which their own fingers have made. In other words, worshiping what you have done yourself. Oh, let's continue. And the mean man boweth down, and the great man humbleth himself. Therefore, forgive them not. Verses 8 and 9 are intrinsically linked. Okay? Their land is full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, which their own fingers have made. Okay? Made their own little g-gods. And the mean man boweth down to what they have made themselves. Okay? And the great man humbleth himself. Therefore forgive them not. Mean and great. The mean boweth down to their idols, to their false little g-gods. And the great man 
Let's continue. Enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down. And the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, and upon everyone that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. And upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, and upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted up, and upon every high tower, and upon every fenced wall, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all the pleasant pictures. Hmm. And, the, and the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of men shall be made low, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. Hold your place here, and go to Philippians. Philippians. Chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Verses 10. Uh, let's actually read verses 8. On to verse 11, talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. God manifest in the flesh, our Father. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father go back to Isaiah chapter 2 picking up now at verse 18 and the idols he shall utterly abolish and they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. In that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold which they made each one for himself to worship. To the moles and to the bats. To go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks, for fear of the Lord, and for the glory of his majesty, when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. Are you looking at verse 22? Cease ye from man, whose breath is in his nostrils, for wherein is he to be accounted of? Are you feeling me? Hmm? Isaiah chapter 44. Isaiah chapter 44. Deutero Isaiah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Isaiah 44 verses 9 on to verse 17. They that make graven images are all of them vanity, and their de delectable things shall not profit, and they are their own witnesses. They see not, nor know, that they may be ashamed. Who hath formed a god, little g, 
or molten, a graven image that is profitable for nothing? Behold, all his fellows shall be ashamed, and the workmen, they are men, they are of men. Let them all be gathered together, let them stand up, yet they shall fear, and they shall be ashamed together. The smith with the tongs both worketh in the coals, and fashioneth, fashioneth it with hammers, and worketh it with the strength of his arms. Yea, he is hungry, and his strength faileth. He drinketh no water, and is faint. The carpenter stretcheth out his rule. He marketh it out with a line. He filleth it with planes, and he marketh it out with the compass, and maketh it after the figure of a man according to the beauty of a man, that it may remain in the house. Worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. See, now, see there's a lot of tie-ins into Romans chapter 1 that you can make with what we're looking at, aren't we? <laughs> you read that on your own time. you got to do something now there, man. Okay, let's continue. He layeth him down cedars, and taketh the cypress and the oak, which he strengtheneth for himself among the trees of the forest. He planteth an ash, and the rain doth nourisheth, nourisheth, nourish it. Excuse me. Then shall it be for a man to burn, for he will take thereof and warm himself. Yea, he kindleth it, and baketh bread. Yea, he maketh a god and worshipeth it. He maketh it a graven image, and falleth down there too. Worshipeth, falleth down. You're getting the point. I know you are. Let's continue. He burneth part thereof in the fire. With part thereof he eateth flesh. He roasteth roast, and is satisfied. Yea, he warmeth himself, and saith, Ah, I am warm. I have seen the fire. And the residue thereof, he maketh a god. Even his graven image, he falleth down onto it, and worshipeth it, and prayeth unto it. <laughs> And saith, Deliver me, for thou art my God. Falling down and praying unto a false God, but yet falling down, kneeling, speaking, even praying is attributed to worship. <laughs> You don't say. And now, Isaiah chapter 46. Isaiah chapter 46. Bel boweth down, Nebo stoopeth. Their idols were upon the beasts and upon the cattle. Your carriages were heavy loaden. They are a burden to the weary beast. They stoop, they bow down together. They could not deliver the burden but themselves are gone into captivity. Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. And even to your old age, I am he. And even to her hairs will I carry you. I have made, and I will bear. Even I will carry and will deliver you. To whom will ye liken me, and make me equal, and compare me, that we may be like? They lavish gold out of the bag, and weigh silver in the balance, and hire a goldsmith, and he maketh it a god. They fall down, yea, they worship. Fall down, worship. They bear him upon the shoulder. They carry him, and set him in his place. And he standeth. From his place shall he not remove. Yea, one shall cry unto him. 
Yet can he not answer, nor save him out of his trouble? Remember this, and shew yourselves men. Bring it again to mind, O ye transgressors. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. And that includes yourself. We were made in the image of God, spirit, soul, and body. Yes, but you can't save yourself. That's what the Lord does. When you come to him on his terms. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times to things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country, yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have proposed it. I have proposed it. I will also do it. Hearken unto me, ye stout-hearted that are far from righteousness. I bring near my righteousness, my righteousness. It shall not be far off, and my salvation shall not tarry, and I will place salvation in Zion for Israel my glory. Look at verse 6. And he maketh it a God, they fall down, yea, they worship. <laughs> you, you getting the point? But see, Here's the thing. Here's the thing. What we have been looking out at thus far about worship, we see that bowing down is definitely attributed to worship. Okay? Kneeling, raising the hands, speaking, praying. We see that attributed unto worship. Okay? Okay? We see that. But also we have, there's something very, very significant all to this. Very significant. See, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Those out there who say prayer, prayer is a work. And that Take repentance from being sorrow and contrition, brokenness, okay? But say it's simply turning from unbelief to belief, perverting what scriptural repentance truly is, okay? Jump over that and just believe and not asking God to save you, okay? See, they say that those of us who teach and preach the true gospel of Jesus Christ, that we are telling you that a prayer saves you. That's why they attack calling on the name of the Lord. Okay? That's why. But see... Think about this also, brethren. There are people out there who say, well, I've called on the name of the Lord and I, I've never gotten assurance. I've done all this. I've done all this. Go to Psalm 34 now. Psalm 34. What's, what's the difference, right? What's the difference here? What is the difference? Um, I can think, I, I, right away in my mind, I'm, I'm thinking of a, a man from Australia who said that I had always called on the name of the Lord and never got assurance until I believed and all this stuff. And let's read Psalm 34. Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. 
O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no one to them that fear him. The young lions do lack, and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days, that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord upon the right are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Verse 18. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save us such as be of a contrite spirit. Look at verse 9. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. Let, let's, let's cut this all away and let's get right to the point of the matter. It's an issue of your heart. See, there are these people out there who say, God knows my heart. God knows my heart. Yeah, he sure does. Is your heart broken over the sin that you committed against the Lord after all he has done for you? His salvation is there. You have to go to him on his terms. But you come with your haughty heart. You're not willing to be broken. You're not willing to be sorry for what you have done to the Lord. Not for the fact that you got caught. Okay? No. No. Are you afraid of the Lord? Are you afraid of the Lord? See, someone who is of a broken heart and of a contrite spirit is deathly afraid of the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, which all these heretics have turned into a fluffy little teddy bear. It's a matter of your heart. See, the easy believism heretic says that we teach you that you are saved by a prayer. That's why they harp on calling upon the name of the Lord, which is, you will call on the name of the Lord and ask him to save you. 
But that in and of itself doesn't save you. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. When you come to him broken and contrite, brokenness, it's a matter of your heart. You say, God knows your heart, right? Right? But yet there's no change. Hmm? You love the things of the world? You're okay with profanity even spewing from you? 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. See, this is what the easy believism heretic doesn't get. Oh, they, they, they get it mentally. They get the mental mechanics of it. But see what they're missing? What they are missing? 1 Timothy chapter 1. Come on, fingers work with me. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 22. First, uh, beg your pardon. Sorry about that. I wrote down the wrong note. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. Okay? Uh, actually, let's read verses 21 on to verse 22. If a man therefore purge himself, himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of of a pure heart. Can't be broken. I mean, you can't be fixed until you're broken. And in that breaking, coming to the Lord broken for what you've done to Him and sorrowful for what you have done to Him and disgusted with yourself for what you have done. That's a pure heart towards the Lord. Okay? See, there are those out there who say, who said that, well, I've called on the Lord. Is your heart pure towards the Lord? Have you come to Him broken? Or just thinking that it's a mental thing where it's from going from unbelief to belief. You see? Go to Psalm 14. Go to Psalm 14. Out of a pure heart. Psalm 14. Okay? Psalm 14, verse 1. You ought to know this by heart. You ought to know this by heart. Come on, what's the problem here? Come on. Psalm 14, verse 1. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. Okay? Now go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. Come on. Work with me, fingers. Come on. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 14 on to verse 27. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it and pass away. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Because your heart isn't broken. You easy believers and heretics. You're in your pride. Because you are not coming to the Lord for Him to deal with your heart. You're not dealing with your heart. Broken.
drunkenness is required. And in that brokenness, that is a pure heart. One that is broken and sorrowful and fearful of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Sorrowful for what you have done against him. And absolutely detesting yourself for what you are. Tell me, do you see yourself like that? Let's continue this. Okay, let's continue this. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ears, thine ear unto my saying. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left, remove thy foot from evil. It's an issue of your heart. And out of a pure heart, one that is broken and contrite, and fearful of our Lord Jesus Christ and grateful thankful you love the Lord for what he has done for you and that true love of our Lord Jesus Christ God our Father only comes from someone who is broken you easy believism heretics how can you love the Lord if you're not broken hmm how by just believing? How can you fear the Lord without being broken? None of you, you easy believism heretics, none of you fear the Lord. Nor can you love the Lord because you're not broken. You didn't come to him his way. No, you're doing all this other stuff, changing what the scripture says, going to the belief. And you throw it back at us we're saying it's prayer that comes from a broken heart this is what you easy believism heretics don't get because of your lack of a broken heart psalm uh, proverbs 10 verses 1 on verse 14 Proverbs 10, verses 1 on and verse 14. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivereth from death. The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he casteth away the substance of the wicked. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. He that gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. Blessings are upon the head of the just, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. Look, hello. We, we've all seen that, haven't we? The memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall rot. The wise in heart will receive commandments, but the prating fool shall fall. You hinge that one right there, brother, sister. Okay? The wise in heart will receive commandments, but a prating fool shall fall. <laughs> yeah, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. What is wisdom? And unto man he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Job 28, 28. And see, because 
you easily believe as some heretics don't have a right heart with our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, you'll never get it. Because you've perverted scriptural repentance as it meaning only from going from unbelief to belief and getting rid of the brokenness. And making lame excuses. Oh, you're convicted. Yeah, right over there is the county lockup. There's a lot of people in there that are convicted, but they're not broken. Oh, they're sorry that they got caught, but they're not broken. There's a big difference there. He that walketh uprightly walketh surely, but he that perverteth his ways shall be known. They will expose themselves. The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. Hmm. Hatred stirreth up strifes, but love covereth all sins. In the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found, but a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the fool is near destruction. And Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21, verses 1 under verse 4. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. An high look and a proud heart, and the plowing of the wicked is sin, a proud heart. That's what you easy believers and heretics have, a proud heart. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. That's why you're so against brokenness and calling on the name of the Lord. Because your hearts aren't right. Your heart hasn't been broken. You're in your pride. And someone who is truly broken, disgusted with themselves, sorrowful for what they did to the Lord and afraid of Him, Yes, then belief is easy. And you're going to call on the name of the Lord as soon as you can, because you come broken, you know. And we have seen people can worship fake gods while they made things of their own hands, made their own little g-gods. But those who feared the Lord. They worship the Lord out of a pure heart. Proverbs 24, verses 1 on to verse 12. Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them, for their heart studieth destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. Look at how these easy believism heretics behave themselves. No fear of God. They don't truly love God because they're in their pride. They have a proud heart. Not a broken heart. Not a contrite spirit. Through wisdom is an house builded, and by understanding it is established, and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge increaseth, for by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in the multitude of counselors there is safety. Wisdom is too high for a fool. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. 
Wisdom is too high for a fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. He openeth not his mouth in the gate. He that deviseth to do evil shall be called a mischievous person. The thoughts of foolishness is sin. And the scorner is an abomination is an abomination to men. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death, and those that are ready to be slain, if thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not. Doth not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, doth not he know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his works? Now, God knows your heart. He knows it's not broken. He knows that it doesn't belong unto him. Go to Ezekiel, Ezekiel, chapter 11, Ezekiel, chapter 11, verses 13, on verse 21. And it came to pass, when I prophesied that Pelatiah, the son of Benaiah, died, then fell I down upon my face, and cried with a loud voice, and said, O oh Lord God, wilt thou make a full end of the remnant of Israel? Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, thy brethren, even thy brethren, the men of thy kindred, and all the house of Israel, holy, are they unto whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, Get you far from the Lord. Unto us is this land given in possession. Therefore say, Thus saith the Lord God, Although I have cast them far off from the, he the heathen, although I have cast them far off among the heathen, excuse me, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. And they shall come thither, and they shall take away all the detestable things thereof, and all the abominations thereof from thence. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and will give them an heart of flesh, that they may walk in my statutes, and keep my ordinances, and do them, and they shall be my people and I will be their God. But as for them whose heart walketh after the heart of their detestable things and their abominations, I will recompense their way upon their own heads, saith the Lord God. Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 15 on to verse 32. Verses 15 on to verse 32 in Ezekiel chapter 16. But thou didst trust in thine own beauty, and playedest the harlot because of thy renown, and pourest out thy fornications on every one that passed by. His it was. Look at, at the evangelizing these easy believism heretics are doing right now. And you of the Church of the Living God, what are you doing? Let's continue. And of thy garments thou didst take, and deckest thy high places with divers colors, and playedest the harlot upon, and playedest the harlot thereupon. The like thing shall not come, neither shall it be so. Thou hast also taken thy fair jewels of my gold and of my silver, which I have given thee, and madest to thyself images of men, and didst commit whoredom with them. And tookest thy broidered garments, 
and coveredest them, and thou hast set mine oil and mine incense before them. Talk about being ungrateful, unthankful for what the Lord has done for them. My meat also, which I gave thee, fine flour and oil and honey, wherewith I fed thee. Thou hast even set it before them for a sweet savor, and thus it was, said the Lord God. Moreover, the, moreover, thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters, whom thou hast borne unto me, and these hast thou sacrificed unto them to be devoured. Is this of thy whoredoms a small matter? That thou hast slain my children, and delivered them to cause them to pass through the fire for them? And in all thine abominations and, thine whoredom, and thy whoredoms, Thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth, when thou wast naked and bare, and was polluted in thy blood. And it came to pass after all thy wickedness, woe, woe unto thee, saith the Lord God, that thou hast, built, that thou hast also built unto thee an eminent place, and hast made thee an high place in every street. Thou hast built thy high place at every head of the way, and hast made thy beauty to be abhorred, and hast opened thy feet to every one that passed by, and multiplied thy whoredoms. Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptians thy neighbors, great of flesh, and hast increased thy whoredoms to provoke me to anger. Remember, for our instruction in righteousness, the Egyptians are always compared as to a type of those of the world, Egypt, the world, Pharaoh, Satan, get it? Remember? Let's continue, okay? Behold, therefore, behold, therefore, I have stretched out my hand over thee, and have diminished thine ordinary food, excuse me, and delivered thee unto the will of them that hate thee, the daughters of the Philistines, which are ashamed of thy lewd way. Thou hast played the whore also with the Assyrians, because thou wast unsatiable, yea, thou hast played the harlot with them, and yet couldst not be satisfied. Thou hast also more, thou hast moreover multiplied thy fornication in the land of Canaan unto Chaldea, and yet thou wast not satisfied therewith. How weak is thine heart! said the Lord God, seeing thou doest all these things, the work of an, of an, of an imperious, imperious, whorish woman, in that thou buildest thine eminent place in the head of every way, and makest thine high place in every street, and hast not been as an harlot, in that thou scornest higher. But as a wife that committeth adultery, which taketh strangers instead of her husband. How weak is thine heart? How weak is thine heart? Because it's full of its of pride. Here, here's a news flash for you. A broken heart towards the Lord Jesus Christ, sorrowful and repentant, turning from yourself. You know, and broken over what you have done to the Lord, okay? Something that you easily believe is some heretics do not have. Go to Matthew chapter 22, or Matthew chapter 12, excuse me. Matthew chapter 12, verses 22 on to verse 37. Matthew chapter 12. Verses 22 on to verse 37. Then was brought unto him one possessed with a dumb with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. 
And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall, how shall then his kingdom stand? Look at how all the easy believism heretics are grouping together. His scales are his pride, remember? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, <clears throat> by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, capital S, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house? He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be given unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither the world to come. And I have a whole video on about this unpardonable sin. Okay, look at my most popular uploads or whatever it's called. Okay, I, uh, I might link it in this one. Okay, so I'm not going to get off on that. Verse 32, uh, 33, either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Now right there, okay? Right there. Right there. Verse 37. It's an issue of the heart. You call on the name of the Lord out of a broken heart, believing on Him for what He has done for you. Believing on Him. You call on the name of the Lord out of a broken heart. Okay? It's a broken heart that is necessary for salvation. If you come to the Lord with pride in your heart by just going from unbelief to belief and not being disgusted with yourself and sorry for what you've done to the Lord, fearing Him, there's no way you can love Him. There's no way. How can you love someone that you don't fear? Oh! For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. And you notice, okay, from verses 33 on to verse 37, it's about the heart. Now granted, this is pre-crucifixion, yes. But this nagging issue about your heart. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Verses 39 on to verse 47. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me, that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men, 
but I know you. That ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him will ye, him ye will receive. Just believe. How can ye believe, which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Do not think I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? But I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. How can you love God without being broken of yourself? See, here's the thing, dear friend. Go to Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 and 10. You say, God knows your heart. One of the lamest excuses for someone looking to justify their sins. The heart is deceitful. Jeremiah 17, verses 9 and 10. You ought to have these memorized. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Verses 24 under verse 25. The heart is deceitful. O oh, wretched man that I am. Romans 7, verses 24 under verse 25. O oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Talking about brokenness. Job, chapter 42. Job, chapter 42. Job, chapter 42. Verses 1 on verse 6. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not, things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore I abhor myself, and repent in dust and ashes. Abhor yourself. You know what abhor means? Extreme hatred. When the Lord reveals to you of how desperately wicked you are, how deceived, deceitful your heart is, that there is nothing good in you, you hate yourself. And then when he piles on to you what you have done, you're afraid, and you're sorrowful, and you hate yourself. When I got saved 12 years ago, in the bathroom at my former employment, 
I got down on my knees on a cold concrete floor, hating myself for what I have done to the Lord, afraid of him, knowing that it was all my fault. I was afraid. I hated myself for what I had done to him. I was broken. And I trust on him and see this is what you guys don't get. You easy believers and heretics don't get. When your heart is broken, it's easy to believe. And in that belief on him, out of a broken heart, you raise your hands, kneeling, bowing down. Lord Jesus Christ, come, my Father, save me. Because you come to him with a broken heart. And repent of yourself. You turn from you. And you have sorrow for what you've done to him. That's something you easy believers and heretics do not grasp. Because go to Hebrews very quickly. Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3, okay, specifically written for the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble, but we're going to read this. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 8 under verse 15. As we already have referenced earlier in this video. Harden not your hearts. As in the provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you by hardening by be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast on to the end. While it is said, Today if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. Got a hard heart? Hardened with pride? Not willing to be broken? And of course, Acts chapter 7? See, the scriptures cut you. And the Lord, through the scriptures, puts his finger on that very thing. Your pride. Oh, beg your pardon, brethren. Sorry about that, my cat. Acts chapter 7, verses 51 on to verse 54. See, brokenness is a requirement. You cannot be fixed until you are broken. And when you say that it is just from going from unbelief to belief without allowing the Lord to break you and not having a broken heart and sorrow for what you've done to the Lord. Look at this. 51 on the verse 54. After Stephen gave the rundown to his own people. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which shewed before of the coming of the Just One, capital J and capital O of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, whom have received the law by the disposition of angels, and have not kept it. You're not 
good. You can't save yourself. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. See, a true preacher, a true teacher, a true witness of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, through the Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and the, and the Lord is that Spirit, through the Scriptures, prophesy to you, speaking the word of the Lord, That you're not good. You're not good. And you're going to hell. Unless you repent of yourself. Your pride. Go to 1 Corinthians. Chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. First Corinthians chapter 14 verses 24 and verse 25. First Corinthians 14 verses 24. <coughs> Excuse me. Verses 24 under verse 25. But if all prophesy and there come in one that believeth not or unlearned he is convinced of all he is judged of all. And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God. And report that God is in you of truth. Worship God. Bowing. Kneeling. Face down to the ground, speaking, praying. Now, an infiltrator, they can worship their own God, which their own fingers have made in their pride. But someone who is truly saved out of a broken heart can truly worship God. can truly worship God. Right here, verses 24 and 25. Verse 25, And thus the secrets of his heart, and thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God. God and report that God is in you for truth saved someone in pride cannot worship God you know our Lord Jesus Christ God our Father the God of the authorized version of the scriptures the King James scriptures the true and real scriptures but those in their pride you know who detest brokenness who detest humility by calling upon the name of the Lord they can worship a little G God of their own making. One that has no requirements. Because when you go to Romans chapter 10, okay, when you go to Romans chapter 10, verses 9 on to verse 13. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, 
and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And how can someone call on the name of the Lord and truly be saved if their heart is not broken? Second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 24 and verse 26. On to verse 26. Again. Verses 24 on to verse 26 in 2 Timothy chapter 2. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto men, apt to teach, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, whom are taken captive by him at his own will. Your pride opposes. You're opposing yourself in your pride. Wanting to reject brokenness and humility before the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. You have no fear of God. And you have, it's impossible for you to love the Lord without being broken. Because, there again, you're saved by what you're doing. Not coming to the Lord on His terms with a broken heart. And hence, beloved, uh, beloved brethren, the Catholicism of easy believism is based on what they do, not on what the Lord has done, because their hearts are not broken and sorrowful, and they do not abhor themselves, but are upright in themselves, because they just believe. Those of us of the Church of the Living God, we do not teach you that a prayer saves you. No. You need to come to the Lord on His terms, broken. Because if you come in your pride, see, when you are broken of yourself, when you repent of yourself and are sorrowful, two things that the easy believism adherent hates. Brokenness. And humility. Oh, you hate it. You can fake it, but then deep down in your pride you hate it. Because you are your own God and you worship what your fingers have made. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Come on, fingers. Verse 2. Uh, actually, <clears throat> let's read verses 1 on to verse 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Hmm. 
unless, verse 2, unless ye have believed in vain. Here it is in a nutshell. You easy believism heretics are believing in vain because your heart is not right with the Lord, because you are still in your pride. You have never been broken. You have never been sorrowful for what you have done to the Lord. And you do not abhor your own self for what you have done to the Lord. It shows. It shows. In the way you preach, <laughs> the way you teach, <laughs> it shows. You shall know them by their fruits. John chapter 4. And this is going to lead into part 2. This is going to lead into part 2. John chapter 4. Come on, come on. Fingers work with me. John chapter 4. Come on, come on. <laughs> John chapter 4, verses 21 under verse 26. About the woman at the well. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him in spirit and in truth broken heart and a contrite spirit and the truth is that you abhor yourself that you know that you know that you are worthy to go to hell and there's only one who can save you and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and out of that brokenness call in humility on the name of the Lord you see that's something that you guys don't get and never will get unless you are broken <clears throat> God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth the woman saith unto him I know that Messiah Messiah cometh which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. And go back now to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Spirit and truth, worship him. Worship him in spirit and in truth. 1 Corinthians 14, verses 24 on to verse 25. But if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all, and thus the secrets of his heart, and thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. Only one who has come to the Lord Jesus Christ broken can truly worship the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. A false convert, one who has their pride in their heart, they can't truly worship the one true God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Because the secrets of their heart will be made manifest, especially when they abhor 
brokenness, contrition, and humility. So, that's going to be it for this video. I'm going to make a second part of sorts of this, of sorts of this. But, um, like I said, this was something that a brother had uh, given on to me, and this was a collaborated effort. But I'm going to go. My wife and I got things we got to do. I love you. And may our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, be magnified. In Jesus' name, thank you. Bye-bye.